Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Faith with Love Fellowship Church. We trust you're having a good evening, and uh, we uh, love you, appreciate you. So glad that you're able to tune in and uh, have the desire to tune in to uh, spend some time with us and uh, with the Lord Jesus in the Word of God. We are starting a new series tonight in the Revelation of John, uh, the Revelation of the Lord Jesus that he gave to the Apostle John. Amen. And uh, we're going to get into it in just a moment. Let's pray together and then uh, we'll jump right in. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice, to be glad in it, O oh God. And uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, no matter what we face in life, uh, whether it be uh, difficult and seemingly impossible, struggles, um, temptations, and all the rest, our faith is the victory that overcomes. And so, Lord, we hold fast to our faith without wavering. We, we uh, will not compromise. Hallelujah. We hold fast to the truth of who you are in the Word of God. And we thank you, Lord, that you uh, watch over your Word to perform it, that you will always honor and vindicate your servants who walk in your ways. And uh, Lord, we praise you. Thank you for the night. We thank you for your blessing on your Holy Word and upon your people as they hear all of us together. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, uh, I was getting ready to preach on Revelation, and Miss Karen uh, mentioned to me uh, that Rick Renner has a series and a study that he put together, and um, and uh, I listened to it, and it was really wonderful. I'll probably share a little of that as a as an introduction to this uh, marvelous book, uh, Hallelujah, just so that you understand uh, that uh, this is. Uh, written by John, and John is, uh, at this time of his life, he's the last living apostle of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, years and years have passed after Jesus uh, uh, died on the cross, and, and as he hung on the cross, he looked to John, and he looked to his mother, and he says, uh, you know, mother, behold your son, and, and uh, John, behold your mother. And so he was entrusting his mother Mary into John's care. And so uh, pretty much for the rest of her life, um, John took care of her and provided for her. And they, they traveled in ministry together. And uh, wherever John went, Mary was there. And uh, wherever Mary went, John was there. And uh, he provided for her. He took care of her uh, until uh, her own passing. And then uh, he continued on. Uh, John uh, um, was um, um, watched as his uh, brother's you know, in in the uh, the brother apostles of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus, you know that one by one they were martyred, and um, and uh, he uh, had to endure that, and that must have been very very difficult on him. Uh, each in, uh, in their turn as they went out and did what God had called them to do, uh, and then um, they were they were faithful, they were fruitful, they were uh, blessed. Uh, but then news would come to him of one of them being martyred, and uh, and it probably, you know, there, there's a it's a it, there's almost a dichotomy. It's it's they rejoice in what they accomplish for the kingdom of God, and uh, they rejoice in the fact that they have gone home to be with the Lord Jesus. But at the same time, we're missing, uh, you know, uh, one of our one of our our brothers, you know, one of our. Uh, uh, we've been sent out together. Hallelujah! They were they were commissioned to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And, and how many know we need more of that, not less? And, and so um, uh, they continued to uh, expand. The word of God continued to expand and to grow. Uh, as I talked about on Sunday, the four gospels each tell a slightly different perspective of the life of the Lord Jesus, including John. And John shares the revelation that he received of the Lord Jesus, and he brings it to us in his in his book, uh, of the the, uh, the Gospel of John. So, uh, what winds up happening is uh, time passes, 
And uh, then eventually all of the apostles of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus have passed away. And, and John is getting older and he is uh, being used of God to uh, go into portions of Asia and to do marvelous works for the kingdom of God, Asia and Asia Minor. And uh, then eventually Paul is um, martyred and, uh, and then John takes over the oversight uh, of pretty much the church world. Uh, Asia, Asia Minor, and he goes to a place um, by Ephesus, and he uh, stays there, and he is um, visited by church leaders from pretty much all around the world, and they come, and, and they, uh, they're looking to him now, because he's, he's really the only one uh, left, and um, that uh, they come to him for his wisdom, for his guidance, and for his um, encouragement. And, um, and so, you know, things seem to be going well for John, and he's under the radar, but uh, a evil emperor rises up, uh, Domitian, and he thinks he's God. He proclaims himself to be God, to be Lord, and he demands that everybody in the Roman Empire worship him as God. And uh, so what they began was a process of burning incense. So everywhere you went, there were idols of this, uh, of this man, uh, Domitian, and he uh, demanded that whenever you passed one of these idols, you had to take a pinch of incense and burn incense to him, because after all, he claimed to be God um, incarnate. And, uh, and so um, history tells us that John refused and uh, because he refused, it drew attention to him. And then uh, what wound up happening was word of this got back to Domitian and he called for John to stand before him. And so John now comes to, uh, to Rome and he is actually there and he has a private audience with Domitian and Domitian demands that he um, renounce uh, Almighty God that he not preach in the name of Jesus, that he not uh, speak the name of Jesus. You know, this is it's always what the devil's after. He wants to stop the preaching of the gospel. He wants to stop the people of God from, from speaking the word of God, amen, and, and, and from prophesying and from, and from declaring what the spirit of God says uh, to us to declare. And uh, the devil wants to stop it. He always has, he always will. So we don't think it's strange. And uh, that's why these individuals, many of them were marred in the way they were, because they refused to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. They refused to stop speaking, and because of that, they, they were... Um, they were beaten and they were they were pierced they were impaled they were they were eventually all, all martyred except for John so uh, he refuses and in a fit of rage uh, Domitian has them uh, fill a giant pot with uh, boiling oil that was the custom of the day for those who um, who did not do his pleasure they would uh, basically boil them alive. And um, as they would throw a human being in that vat of boiling oil, pretty much the flesh would burn off of them and then they would pull out the skeleton and discard it. And it would be a, an open display of this is uh, what happens to you if you displease uh, Domitian, the emperor of the day. And so um, he was warned uh, the Apostle John was warned that this was going to happen to him and uh, and he would not renounce the Lord Jesus. He would not burn incense or acknowledge this man Domitian as God incarnate. And so in a fit of rage, sure enough, they filled up the vat with, with uh, boiling oil and they threw John in. And uh, they watched him go down in the vat of boiling oil and waited and waited and waited. And then, uh, you know, the normal process is they go in with you know, no better way of putting it, but basically big hooks, and they just uh, find the, the carcass and drag it out and discard it. And um, when they put in the hooks, they were able to uh, find John, and John came out under his own power, and the oil had no effect on him whatsoever, and he was not even burned. He just, like the three Hebrew children, he didn't smell of smoke. His, his flesh was intact, and, and Domitian was so terrified because here he has a face-to-face -face encounter with the Almighty God, amen, and he realizes that I'm not him. 
and uh, in in fear, uh, he does what whatever he can to get this man John as far away from him as possible. So it is this um, emperor that banishes John to the Isle of Patmos, and Patmos was a, an island. Um, not too far off the coast, but there was no way to get there except by boat. And once you were there, you don't come back pretty much. Uh, that area housed two different kinds of criminals. Uh, criminals that had broken the law were treated horribly and they, uh, they were uh, demeaned and, and they were uh, persecuted and tortured and all the rest. But political prisoners, uh, as John was, were held with a little bit more esteem and uh, for fear of, of uh, Domitian and so um, but it was a very difficult life and he had to fend for himself get his own food get his own water uh, find his own place or arrangements and pretty much the island was devastated by others who had come to conquer these islands they had wiped out all the vegetation they had taken all the lumber it was just barren and it was stark but but God provided and, uh, and there's a portion of scripture where it talks about, and John says it from his own heart, he says um, that uh, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And he was telling that to us, not because it was something nice to say or something nice to hear. He was telling it because I've, ex I've actually experienced it. Amen. Uh, I've, I've been through all of this. You remember the Lord said that there was one who was going to live. Amen. And uh, and certainly beyond all his his peers. And so here's John on the Isle of Patmos and um, he has a, uh, um, a secretary, a, a scribe uh, with him in this in this um, journey. And uh, he's there for 18 months. And now he's, you know, in his 90s, maybe his mid 90s. And uh, what winds up happening is this Domitian passes away. And um, and uh, so it's the, 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 the rule is when the person who persecuted you or prosecuted you, put it that way, dies, then all political prisoners are set free. So John is set free once again, and he goes back to Ephesus, and he goes back to that place where he was living, and he continues to uh, his ministry. He continues to greet the pastors, the elders, the leaders from all the churches, the seven churches, and all the churches of, of, of Asia, Asia Minor, Turkey, and all the other ones. And, uh, and he's blessed in his, in, his, uh, uh, in his time of ministry. And at that time, uh, you know, that's when he writes 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John from that place. Uh, after he's learned so much, after he's been through so much, after his faith has been tested and it's and it's and, and it's brought him through to victory, Amen. And uh, and he is uh, there, and he uh, uh, is uh, worshiping God and praising God and rejoicing in in God, Amen. Reminds me very much of of Joseph. Hallelujah! That even though he was um, he was betrayed, he kept his heart turned towards God in purity and in and in um, uh, 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 integrity and honesty. Amen. And, and and others as well, though they're persecuted, though they were though they were harassed, though they were challenged, though they were even told they refused. You know that the the, the um, in the book of Acts they were they were beaten. Uh, and, and they were forbidden from preaching in the name of Jesus and and they refused and they and God opened doors and God uh, made ways and, and, and brought them out and, and um, they could all have the same uh, basically the same uh, testimony that faith is the victory that overcomes the world so don't don't let go of your faith don't don't let go of your faith don't let go of your faith regardless of what you feel what what what's going on around you uh don't let go of your faith in god amen your faith in god's word he's trustworthy he's faithful he's dependable amen and um and so while he was in uh, while he was in a, a cave you know we we come to the understanding that jesus came into the cave and, and here we have uh, what we call the revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's important to notice that um, John 
is writing here in the book of Revelation. Uh, it says, first of all, in chapter 1, in the end of the verse, it says, uh, unto his servant John. And so he reintroduces himself to be the writer of this book. And then it, later on, it says in verse 4, it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. And then finally, down in verse 9, it says, I, John. And it's kind of unusual that he's making such a, uh, you know, an issue about about him. And but he's basically letting the the people that he's writing to let them know he, it's it's still me. It, it's 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 really me because you would imagine that people thought all kinds of things when he when he disappeared and he was he was uh, on you know he went to Rome this is this is months could be who knows how long to get from one place to another months uh, by boat by by uh, caravan or whatever and uh, and those who knew him uh, the only surviving apostle of the lamb uh, they they wondered what he, he must have died I mean I can't imagine he ever could have survived that and and word got back about being boiled in oil and but they probably figured well that that did him in and and all the rest so he's making a point of letting everybody know no no this is me this is the same me this is the same John uh, that have, has written to you before in the gospel and uh, now I've written to you in three epistles, one John, second John, third John, and now um, he's received a revelation from, uh, of and from the Lord Jesus Christ and he's about to bring that to us. Amen? Now, um, it's important to notice this is not a different Jesus. This is the same Jesus. And one of the things that Rick Renner brought to light was a great blessing was it's it's uh, as though a curtain was drawn or a veil was was blocking the view of 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 John and, and all of us. Um, Jesus, as he's portrayed in this revelation, was always there. He's always been, but we never really saw this aspect of him because of the veil, because of this um, you know this curtain that was blocking our view. Um, you know, the other night. We have a neighbor across the street and one back that likes to shoot fireworks and big fireworks, big explosions. And, um, and I could hear them um, and I, 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 didn't, I could have gone outside, I'm sure, and I could have gone look at them if I wanted to, but I wasn't really interested, to be honest with you. But I looked out my window to see if I could see anything, and I really couldn't see anything. I mean, I saw a little glimmer of light in between because I have, I have three big Christmas trees in the front of my house, and I couldn't see through those Christmas trees because they're so dense. And so, were there fireworks? Yes. Could you hear them? Yes. Could you see them? No. Why? Because they were veiled. And, and so very much the same way, there are many truths. Uh, the Word of God is filled with truth. Amen. It's always been truth. It's always been there. But uh, there are times where uh, the Holy Spirit will remove the veil, will remove the curtain. In some cases, it's when you're able to handle it, when you're able to stand it. Amen? Uh, hallelujah. Sometimes uh, he can't because you're not, you're not ready. Amen? There's a, there's a, uh, a whole um, understanding about spiritual maturity. And spiritual maturity is not based on what we say is spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is based on what God says. Amen? And, and there are some very strict prerequisites to people God can trust. Amen? He, he can't trust just anybody. And, uh, and so he, you know, the Bible says, you know, give and it shall be given unto you. So it's you who have to make the first step and give. Uh, it doesn't say it'll be given unto you, good measure, press that note. It says you give first. You, you set the, 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 the ball in motion. And, and so much of the Word of God is like that. It's, God is the one who initiates it, but then it's what we do with what He initiates. It's how, how we respond to it, uh, whether or not we respond in faith, or, or what else and and so you know see just because it came to mind the Bible says the sower sows the word amen and then it depends on how we hear the word uh, whether or not we're going to get more amen uh, and whether or not we're going to get revelation if we hunger and thirst after righteousness what does the Bible say you'll be filled in other words you'll get more 
Amen. And, and so as we approach the word of God and as we uh, study to show ourselves approved, workmen need not be ashamed, right and divided in the word of truth. And as we apply ourselves to observe, to do, then more revelation will come. Hallelujah. But if we don't do anything with the re with the little revelation that we have, then we determine that we're, we don't, we're not going to get any more. Do you understand? This is, this is how the, the kingdom of God operates. Amen is you show yourself to be faithful and and god will will uh will bless you and, and will continue to uh, provide and help you hallelujah uh but if you don't prove yourself to be faithful then then you basically you know set set yourself to just stay right where you are and uh and, and you won't advance and it's not god's fault amen it's because we haven't done anything with what we have received hallelujah so uh you know let me remind you again you remember the story about the three servants who were given talents and, and the one went out and used the talents amen and, and came back and said you know master you gave me these talents and and, and i went and i worked them and, and here i'm giving you the talents that you gave me plus interest and then the second one went out and did the same thing basically it was given less but went out and 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 and, and used them and multiplied them and brought back to the to the master what he had given him but also uh interest and then the third one said uh, you know, basically, I, I didn't do anything with them. I put them in the ground, and, and, and he, here, here they are. And the, the master, in this case, uh, scolded him and told him, at least you could have doubled it. Uh, I never expected you to just bury it. And, and so, you know, the end of the story, the moral of the story is, the one who had 10 was now given an, an more, and the one who had five was given more, and the one who had the one and gave it was, even that was taken from him. And, and so there's a, there's a very serious scolding going on for not doing anything with what we have been given. Amen. One of the last um, uh, questions you will ever be asked uh, is, what did you do with my son? Amen. What did you do with Jesus? What did you do with the word? What did you do with the anointing? What did you do with the name of Jesus? What did you do with the blood? What did you do with the word of God? Amen. What did you do with the, with the, with the infilling of the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Good questions. Amen. And uh, and so God is wanting us to uh, to be use you know use everything that He has put in our hands, and and then He'll make sure more is given. So John basically sets himself up to be the recipient of this revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so uh, here he has been faithful. He has endured uh, hardship as a good soldier. He is he is now taking the oversight. He, he's not he's not taking over out of any uh, ulterior motive uh, for Paul. He loved Paul. And when Paul finally was martyred, John didn't step in in any kind of a, uh, of a of a weird or an improper way it was he knew that Paul had first of all he knew that the Lord loves his his church he loves his people amen there's there the church is his shining gem the Bible calls it his bride hallelujah amen and so John understood that and Paul treated the, the churches, the seven churches, and the churches that he oversaw, oversaw. He was the apostle of those churches. He started those churches. He loved them. And it's, it's, it's uh, shown to us in his letters how much he loved the churches. And he couldn't wait to be poured out on their behalf and to see them again and, and crying in tears. And, and, and John had that same heart. Amen. And now Paul wasn't there, but he wanted the churches that Paul established to, to continue to thrive and to help them and be a blessing to them. Amen. And now they would come to him because he had gotten to the point where he's too old to travel. So they would come to him and he would give them all the time they needed and pray with them and encourage them and share, you know, and bless them, strengthen them, establish them, teach them. Amen. Hallelujah. So these are, you know, amazing things. And, and, and so for these reasons and so many others, uh, the, the Lord Jesus knew that he, he can trust John. And, uh, you know, John was faithful to his mother, Mary. 
he didn't just, you know, when when times were good, you know, or no, he, he promised that he would, this is now, he, she is my mother, I take her as my mother, and he provided for her, he took care of her, uh, he, 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 whatever was necessary, amen, whatever Jesus would have done to, for his mother, John was going to make sure he was going to do, equally or more. Amen. You understand? He, he was he was um, very genuine. Hallelujah. And and uh, and when Jesus entrusted her to him, John took it very seriously, and he was going to go uh, the full way with it. Amen. And it's interesting about John. You see this in 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 all of these letters. You see he's just going to go the full way. He's just going to keep on going. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He he is not going to turn to the right or to the left. He's not. Going going to falter he's not going to quit amen even at 90 whatever he was 94 95 years old he's still going he's still preaching he's still giving amen hallelujah and so you know here he uh basically is um in a quiet place it says on the lord's day and and uh some people would say well does that mean saturday because it's you know jewish or does that mean sunday the lord's day well it's actually uh, the the um, the historians all believe it's it's the day of this emperor Domitian. It's uh, he's considered the the lord of of this region, and they they made a holiday on his behalf. And uh, so basically, he says on the Lord's day, uh, you know, um, and, and John didn't pick the day. He just emphasized that this is the day it was. The, this is the Lord's small L's day on, on this Domitian's day, on this national holiday that he declared that's supposed to be for devoted for his worship. That's the day the Lord, King of Kings, the Almighty, decided to give John a revelation of himself. Amen. And the Holy Spirit pulled away the veil, pulled away the curtain. And John saw Jesus different from he'd ever seen him before. Amen. Remember, Jesus came as a suffering servant. He came as a sacrificed lamb. He came meek and humble. Are you with me? He came to do his father's will. He came to sympathize with, you know, fallen mankind. He came to show us the father. Are you with me? He came to, to, to show uh, the will of God in the earth and God would direct him. And he was the perfect uh, 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 follower of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If God said, he told him to go somewhere, he went. If God didn't tell him to go somewhere, he didn't go. If God told him to say something, he said it. If God didn't tell him to say something, he wouldn't speak. He was just completely, absolutely obedient to God. Amen? You with me, my brothers and sisters? And it's amazing because, you know, some people have brought up and we were we were studying it at the retreat with uh, Patty. It was a great blessing. But, you know, some people take issue that when Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda, that only one person got healed. And it's interesting, you know, that with all those people there, why didn't Jesus heal everybody? Well, it's because God directed him to that man and God directed him to speak to that man. And arise and take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man took up his bed and walked. And then, of course, the Pharisees had issue with it and all the rest of it. And then Jesus left because God didn't tell him to do anything else. He didn't tell him to speak to anybody else. Are you with me? But everywhere else he went at God's leading, God's direction, wherever he went, he laid hands on the sick and they recovered. And he preached the gospel on the mountaintops at God's leading. Amen. And Jesus was not going to do anything. He says, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. And so it was not his heart to add or to take away based on what he thought. Are you with me? Amen. It's very important that we don't. We're, we don't do, you know, as, as uh, followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, as, as sons and daughters of Almighty God, that we don't do what we think needs to be done. We go to God and we get the direction because He knows, amen, the end from the beginning. We, we don't just say what comes to mind or, or 
or the first thing you know that that pops into our head we're really struggling to not struggling i guess but we're really endeavoring to hear hallelujah what the spirit of god wants said amen which is going to be a blessing to the hearers which is going to help them build them up you up amen you with me hallelujah so uh here the uh the lord jesus uh chooses this day and he manifests to john and here he uh as i said the holy spirit pulls away the veil and jesus is portrayed different from anything john has ever seen before and uh so if you like let's take a look let's get into it a little bit and uh we'll see how far we can go so chapter one uh, the revelation of John. It's actually the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've heard it called the, the book of revelations. It's, it's not revelations. It's, it's one revelation and it's not a revelation of end times. It is not a revelation of of weird creatures. It's not a rev it's not a revelation of helicopters and and uh, you know wars and 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 uh, Russia. It's not what it's a revelation of. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, in a way that has never been seen before. And the apostle John was taken aback by what he saw. Amen. It's the same Jesus. Hallelujah. It's just a different role. Amen. At first he came, I told you, he came as a sacrifice lamb. He came born in a manger. He came riding on a donkey. He came as a sacrifice. He came to lay his life down. Amen. But that's all been accomplished. He's done all of that. And now the Bible says he ascended into heaven and seated down at the right hand of God. That's the seat of authority. Amen. And he was he was um, given back what he had entrusted to God, his Godhead, his his everything that that made him God almighty. Amen. And, and so uh, when he returns, as we're going to read here, he's not coming back uh, as a meek uh, and quiet uh, sacrifice lamb. He's coming back as a lion. He's coming back as a conquering hero. Hallelujah. He, he, went, uh, he came into, into Jerusalem on a donkey. He's coming back on a white horse. Amen. And he's leading the armies of God. Hallelujah. Uh, against all of those who will not bow willingly to his authority because the truth is he is Lord. Hallelujah. It's not popular opinion that, that gives him that title. It, it's not, uh, you know, because enough people say it, it is because he earned it. God bestowed it upon him. Amen. And he deserves it. Are you listening? Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we'll get there. One of my favorite portions of scripture in the whole Bible is as we are standing around and we, I say we believers, me included, you included, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, are standing around that, that throne in a sea of glass. And John actually sees it in the future. We're going to see it. In the in the in the past, and, excuse me. He sees he sees it. He's looking into the future. We're going to actually be present there. Are you with me? Hallelujah, and and it, and it tells us that there is none worthy, and the Lamb comes up, and He is worthy, and, and that's all that we're able to say. Nothing nothing else. There's no other words. He is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. So. Chapter 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So John is the recipient of this revelation. And it's a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It says, verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So John is saying, I have proven myself to be faithful. God entrusted me with a gospel and I was faithful. God entrusted me with a ministry and I was faithful. God entrusted me with his, you know, Mary, the mother of the Lord Jesus, and I was faithful. 
God entrusted me with a, a lifestyle that would be uh, pure and undefiled before God. And I, I was faithful. I would not burn incense to, to an, a, a, a demonic idol. And, 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 and it goes on and on. And it, yet it cost him, and it cost him dearly. He, he's letting it known that I have been faithful. Amen. And I will endeavor to always be faithful. So here he says, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. This Remember, he's the last living apostle of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Then it says here, blessed is he that readeth and they that bear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So in the beginning, he lays the, the priorities down. Amen. This book is intended to be a blessing to believers. It's intended to give us knowledge of how to proceed. Hallelujah. And it's very important that we, that we heed these words, that we keep this prophecy before us. And, and as I said over and over again, that we do not allow our faith to falter. We don't allow our faith to, to be moved. We, hold, we, we remain steadfast. We remain faithful. We remain true. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Listen and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So he's letting us know it's it's here We're we're here. And today, you know, July, whatever sixth it is, uh, 2022, it's here, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Now, there's a few different ways people will respond. Some people will respond as if, no, 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 denial. No, 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 it's not, it's not here. Some people will respond with uh, fear. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? But God has been training us. Amen. God has been preparing us. This should not be the first time we've read this book. Are you with me? God is preparing us because he, what he is saying, don't ignore it. Don't be afraid. Face it with faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Keeping what, what? What did he say before? What did he say before? What has he said before? Amen? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so this is what he's talking here. Amen? John, verse, that's the second time he's mentioned his name. John, you know, it's, it is me. It, it's me, John, the, 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 the only living. He never says it himself, but he wants us to know. And we have to make that, that association that this is the very John that, that laid his, his, his uh, head on Jesus' chest. Amen? And, and the one who he says himself, the one who, who the Lord loved. This is the same John. And he's a very old man at this time, but he's still the same John. So it says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Amen. And so, you know, uh, for them, they uh, probably thought for a minute, wait a minute, we're used to getting letters from Paul. But now we're getting a letter, and it's a letter we've never, we've never even dreamed of. It's a letter that we didn't see it coming. Are you listening? It's a letter from the very lips of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, entrusted to John, the only still living apostle of the Lamb. Are you with me? Amen. And, um, and it's written to the seven churches that Paul was used of God to establish. And so now John is speaking to them, amen, in, in the present tense, letting them know with the same love that the Lord Jesus has for you then, he has for you now. The, the gems that he, that he has called you to be, he, he still sees you that way and is speaking to you amen that way he's just uh he used paul for so long but now he's using 
his humble servant, John. All right? Another little piece of history. It's interesting. There was one road, basically, main road, major road, that meandered in a gigantic circle. It cut through mountains, it went through ravines and valleys and woodlands and all the different terrains and all the rest of it, but it was one road, basically. And all of these churches were along that one road. And so the Lord had given direction to Paul, just stay on the road. And uh, when he said, you know, Lord, where do we go now? They started the first church in Ephesus. Now where do we go? It's just stay on the road. And they went on their way. And, and as they come to the next city they come to, they got busy sharing the gospel and praying for the sick and, and, and healing the sick and, 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 and praying for God's, uh, the move of the Spirit of God in that region. And, and as they did, the church began to grow and they, they established another church in another city. And when that was done, it says, okay, Lord, what's next? Stay on the road, basically. And so what they would do is, again, it's a long road and it's very far, you know, between, but they would travel and they would go around and stop at these different ones. And then by the end of the road, you know, would circle around and guess where they'd be back again? Ephesus again. And so as you take a look at them, the missionary journey maps that you see of the missionary journeys, you know, it's basically they're, they're traveling on the same road. Sometimes they've got to go by ship. Sometimes they've got to go by, by caravan. Sometimes they, have, they walk. All right. But they are traveling. And, and God has told them, you know, wherever you put your feet, amen, God has given you the land. So wherever they found themselves, they started a church. And here, you know, it says... Um, the church is, it says Ephesus and Smyra and Pergamos and Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. And then it comes back around to Ephesus. So uh, let's take a look. He says in chapter, in verse 4, John to the seven churches which, which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Amen? So notice it tells us, grace be unto you and peace from him which is. Notice it doesn't say just he who was. I'm speaking to you from the point of view of a passed away God. No, that's not what he's saying. He's declaring he was, but he is. And he is to come. So he is very much alive and well. And he's telling them not to be afraid. Why should we be afraid of the Lord's coming? Unless we've been disobedient. But for those who've been obedient to the calling of God, to the word of God, who have embraced him as their personal Savior and Lord, have have diligently hearkened to his word to be obedient to his word in every area of life. Why have we any reason to fear him? We don't. Are you with me? Right. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. The people that have rebelled against him, that have defiled him, that choose not to obey his word, they better fear. Amen. And let that fear move them to repentance before it's too late. Amen? That's the truth. Uh, but God is not to be feared by his children. Are you with me? And, and so, you know, if God is for me, who can be against me? This is the, this is the crux of the book of, of the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I am with you. And I will stand for you, and I will guard you, and I will protect you, and, and, and I'm your father. Amen. And I, will, and I will do what a good father does. I will shield you. Are you with me? Glory to God. And uh, so anyway, um, notice it says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is, is to come, and from the seven churches which are before his throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Seven spirits which are before his throne. 
in uh, the book of Isaiah, it talks about this. You know, here it says seven spirits, and it has caused some folks to uh, misunderstand that there's seven different Holy Spirits, and it's not that's not true. The, the Holy Spirit is, it, it's just one way of putting it. It's just like, again, something you've never seen before. You're going to be very surprised when you, when you meet him face to face. But the challenge is get to know him here on this earth. Amen? So you're not as surprised. And, and the same thing with some of the others, you know, angels are excel in size and all the rest. And, and, and we think of angels and, and yet when we see them, we're going to be surprised because I don't think anybody realizes how, how powerful they are and how they have been assigned their ministering servants to heirs of salvation to you and me. Amen? On how many angels have gone forth and we want to say that each of us have one guardian angel and that's not true. Amen? The Bible says there are more with us than against us. And that was one prophet talking to his one servant he said, there are more with us than against us. Are you with me? Hallelujah. The Bible says he's given his angels, not angel, angels as flames of fire, ministering servants to those called to be heirs of salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. I say these things because, as I said, so many people are afraid of the book of Revelation. The revelation, it, it brings fear. People are afraid to read it. They, they hesitate. They, they, it, it brings fear. It shouldn't bring fear. It, it should bring comfort. It should bring peace. It should bring grace. And, 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 and it, should, it should put a, a fire in us to pay attention and to do what we are commanded to do. Hallelujah. Uh, don't put it on the back burner. Don't, don't make light of it. Keep it priority. Because this is from the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. So, um, I believe it's in Isaiah. I, 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 could, I, I should have looked at it before. But... Um, Isaiah 11. 11. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Isaiah 11. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. There we go. So, Isaiah... Uh, praise God. Thank you to both my, my son and my, my wife and my son. Isaiah chapter 11. Um, it says here, uh, verse 1 and 2, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So number one is the Spirit of the Lord. Number two, the Spirit of wisdom. Number three, the Spirit of understanding. Number four, the Spirit of counsel. Number five, the Spirit of might. Number six, the Spirit of knowledge. Number seven, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Amen? So it's a sevenfold Holy Spirit. And, and I challenge you to spend some time here and read these because not one of them is the Spirit of God. All of them is the Spirit of God. And we don't have a right to take away from Him an attribute that we don't like. Are you with me? Or we don't agree with? Doesn't change the fact that this is who he is. Amen. This is the spirit of the Lord. Amen. He is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of understanding. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of might. The spirit of knowledge. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Amen. What does it say about the fear of the Lord? It's the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. Amen. God is to be feared. Yes, he is to be feared. Are you listening? Because disobedience brings judgment. And so a holy fear will be, I cannot disobey because I don't want those repercussions to come upon my life. And so I will keep myself in the fear of the Lord. I will keep myself straight. I will keep myself strong. I will keep myself unfettered uh, by the world. I'll, I'll do what you tell me to do. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but have you ever crossed like a leading that you get in your heart? 
and afterwards you kick yourself. I have, and I've done it too many times, and I don't like it. You know, something, my own conscience maybe told me something, warned me of something, and I just disregarded it. I didn't pay attention to it. And afterwards, I made, I, 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 I had to pay the price. And afterwards, I say to myself, wrong, what'd you do? I get angry at myself, Why? because I knew it. I knew better. Something told me I shouldn't have, or something told me I should have, and I didn't do it. And that, you know, you do that a couple times, and you start to make up your mind, I don't like this. I don't like this cycle of frustration. And God is saying, because you're not listening. Because you're not, the Bible says, trust the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge God in all your ways that he'll direct your steps and your path, amen? So when you do that, that's the fear of God. Say, Lord, uh, 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 uh. I'm not gonna do it again. I'm gonna take a moment, and I'm gonna pray, get my direction, then I'm gonna do that. Because I don't wanna end up frustrated and angry at myself, calling myself names. Come on, I, I hope maybe you've never been there. I know, but I've been there a couple times. I don't more than I care to have been there. And so, part of what what keeps me on track is the fear of God. Amen. Because if I don't if I don't get His direction, I'm capable of anything. You listening? If I don't trust and get His wisdom, then I'm operating in my own. And boy, that's a, that's a, that's a difficult place to live. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Why should I operate in my own wisdom when the wisdom of God is available to me? Amen? Why should I operate in my own knowledge when the knowledge from heaven is available to me? And it's the fear of God that says to me, I'm going to seek his knowledge. Are you with me? Amen? Hallelujah. So... A little bit more. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, finding that scripture for us. Verse 5, and from Jesus Christ. So first it says, grace and peace from him which is, which was, which is to come. Amen. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's talking that the grace that he's offering and this peace is from God our Father, from the Holy Spirit, and from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen? That's a, that's a triune blessing. Come on, my brothers and sisters. What more could there possibly be for you and I to walk in than tr the triune blessing, where we have the blessing of God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? And, and it's the good news. You have it. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. So when you face difficulties, when you face temptations, when you face, you know, situations gone bad, don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Remember, I've been blessed by my Heavenly Father, by the Holy Spirit, and by the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm blessed. I'm a walking, living, breathing blessing. Deuteronomy says, blessed going in, blessed going out. Amen? These are things that you need to remember in difficult times of your life. Because Jesus said, I'll never leave you, never fail you, for, never forsake you. So is his blessing somehow lifted off of your life? No. Is he not going to watch over his word to perform it? Oh, yes, he will. Amen? So you remain steadfast. You let the praises of God come out of your mouth continuously. Glory to God. Amen. You bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ constantly. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he says, then you make your way prosperous and you have good success. Hallelujah.
because you're observing to do the word of God. You with me? So praise God. It goes on and it says here um, in verse 7, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Hallelujah. So what an introduction this is. Hallelujah. This is, this is John's introduction, basically, of what the Lord Jesus Christ has shown him. The veil has been removed, the curtain has been drawn back, and you get to see what's back, been back there all along. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and, and boy, talk about being worth the wait. Praise God forever. Again, I must reiterate, it's not a different Jesus. It's just in a different role. Same Jesus. He's still compassionate. But he's nobody's fool. Hallelujah. He still has a heart of intercession. But he's also righteous. And completely and absolutely set on obeying his Father's will. Glory to God. He is, what was said here, the faithful witness. He is the faithful witness. This is what God is like. This is what God sounds like. This is what God acts like. This is how God, you know, thinks. And this is how God moves. This is how God operates. Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and he came to show us the Father. Hallelujah. And he did it faithfully. And now he's looking for somebody. Who can I find? Who can I find? Search the whole world. Who can I find? I'm about to bring out a revelation of myself that the world has never seen before. Who can I find? And who does he find? The one that has been faithful. Amen? Glory to God. You see how the fear of the Lord comes back into play? How many know God is looking today for certain individuals? And what he's looking for, he's looking for individuals who are faithful. Amen? Amen. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the whole earth, seeking who may be found faithful. Amen? How many know his eyes are going over a lot of people? Come on. Skipping a lot of people. You know why? Because they're not faithful. Now, I'm going to say it because I believe it's the Spirit of God. But if you would think in your heart, if God were to come to me, he would skip over me because I am not faithful. I'm not doing what he's told me to do. I'm not seeking first the kingdom of God. I don't spend any time with him or very little time with him. I do mostly whatever I want to do. Come on, my brothers and sisters. If there's ever a time for the fear of the Lord, it's now. Because now is a time to repent. The time is at hand. Now is the time to go get the oil. Now is the time to refill your, 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 you know, your cruet so that when the bridegroom comes, he doesn't find you with empty vessels. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Now is the time to get, to get busy. Hallelujah. Now is the time to get into the Word of God. Now is the time to pray like you've never prayed before. Amen? Because God's looking for faithful ones. And I believe you're like me. You don't want him to have to pass you by. You want him to say, yes, I choose you because you have been faithful. Come on, my brothers and sisters. What are those words that we're all hoping he says? Well done, now what? Good, Good and, faithful. and faithful. Servant. Come on, my brothers and sisters. If there's a time for the fear of the Lord, it's now. 
Bring it before the Holy Spirit. Don't trust it to other people. Don't base it on what you think of yourself. You base it on what the Word of God has to say. This is the standard. Jesus is the standard. Are you with me? He's the measure. So base your life on Jesus and see where you fall short in those areas. And then reinforce those areas. Get busy in those areas. Amen? Come on, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Didn't mean to say any of that, but it's the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen? How many know it would be better to do what's right now than to be judged for not doing what was right later? This is a time right now. This is a time. Talk about a an opportunity. Don't don't waste it. Don't let it go by. We're being warned. The bridegroom is coming. Get your oil lamps trimmed and ready. Be about his business. Hearkening diligently unto the word of God, observing to do all that is written therein. Amen? Getting rid of the stuff that doesn't please God or honor Him and getting the things that honor Him and please Him into your life. Praise God forever. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So now, it begins. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. What an introduction. How many know there's nobody else that can make that introduction? Amen? How many know there is no one else that can make that introduction? Anybody could say it, but it's not true about anybody. It's only true about this person. Amen? This Domitian, the emperor, thought he was God. He demanded worship. And the penalty of vote disobedience was death. But was he God? No. He was just a man. And not just a man, but a demonic inspired man. But that's usually the case. trying to make themselves out to be God. But they're not. Because there is only one. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And he's just introduced himself again to John. Notice he didn't come with fish this time. Hey, John. It's me, Jesus. You know? You remember me? Remember the fish dinner I gave to you the first time I called? You remember that? No, no, no. He, he comes and he lets him. So, no, no, no. He says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. And everything in between. Amen? Verse 9. I, John. He's about to tell him. Now, he's saying, remember now, this is me telling you. He says, I, John, who also am your brother. Wow. I, John, am also your brother. No mention of being the apostle of the Lamb. No mention of being the elder John. No mention of being you know, the one who Jesus loved. No mention of, you know, uh, going into the tomb before before Peter, no mention of being in charge with his Jesus' his mother, no mention of standing at the at the crucifixion, no mention of, of these things. He says, I John, who also am your brother. He says, and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, which was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. 
Glory to God. And it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto, per unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Praise God forever. Last thing I do because my time has passed, went too quick for me tonight. He says, your brother and companion in tribulation. Why don't you know John knew what it meant to suffer. John knew what it meant to be persecuted. John knew what it meant to be placed in a position that would normally terrify you. To be thrown into a vat of boiling oil. John knew it all. But his testimony was faith overcomes the world. My faith overcame, your faith will overcome. You with me? We'll pick up right from here next time and we'll continue. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for the time that we're able to spend together with your people, with God's people. We love these times of refreshing and encouragement and uh, even correction. We, we all need correction. It keeps us on the straight and narrow. I'd rather be corrected and go the right way than and continue to go the wrong way and to only find out at the end of my road that I went the wrong way. Oh, Lord, thank you for your kindness, your mercy, your grace. As always, traveling mercies as we return to our homes. May our homes be blessed, our sleep be sweet. Traveling mercies on our, on our brothers and sisters that are, that are traveling. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for it always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time, uh, Sunday morning. A Friday night youth group will be broadcast, but Sunday morning right here in church, okay? Love to have you come. God bless you. See you then.